Hi, this is Trevor, and this video is an overview of the Freddie Mac Small Balance Multifamily Loan. So if you're an apartment investor or you're planning to invest in apartments or you're a real estate professional who works with apartment investors, this video is for you. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you stick around to the end of the video, I have some extras for you, like checklists and things like that to help you get started on your way. A lot of lenders will refer to the Freddie Mac Small Balance Loan as the SBL, and that's what I'll refer to it for the rest of this video. Over the decades, I have done a lot of different agency loans. The Freddie Mac Small Balance Loan is a great loan for apartment investors, and here's why. First, let's talk about the loan amount. The Freddie Mac SBL is good for loans up to $7.5 million. Some small markets or very small markets might have limit of $6 million, but the SBL can technically go up to seven and a half million with an exception in any market. As far as the number of units goes, there are no unit limitations up to $6 million of loan amount. And for loans between six and seven and a half million, you can go up to a hundred units with the SBL or potentially more with an exception from the lender. The Freddie SBL is specifically a purchase or a refinance loan. So it's for acquisitions, or refinancing out existing debt. It's not available for mezzanine debt or for construction loans. The property type for the SBL is limited to multifamily. It's specifically designed for apartments. However, there is one exception, which would be a mixed use property that has multifamily and then perhaps say like retail on the ground floor, but that has to be granted an exception by the lender and typically can't make up more than 20% of the total income for the whole property. And what's really nice about the SBL is that interest only terms are available, which can be an advantage in a market where rates have just skyrocketed. If the investor wants to conserve cash flow and keep their payment low, and they're not too worried about principal pay down, they can get interest only terms for three or as many as five years on the SBL. Another nice feature is the amortization. The Freddie Mac SBL is a 30 year amortizing loan. The exception to that being if an interest only portion was used during the loan, say three years of interest only, then once the loan started amortizing, it would be amortized over 27 years instead of 30. So the period of interest only payments comes out of the original 30 year amortization. The loan term is one of the advantages to the SBL. It's typically a 20 year loan and the lenders will offer five years, seven years, or 10 years of a fixed interest rate and then the loan becomes a variable rate after that. So the SBL is technically what we call a hybrid loan. Another nice aspect of the SBL is the prepayment penalty structure. You actually have two options. You can do a yield maintenance prepayment penalty, or in exchange for a slightly higher interest rate, you can do a step down declining penalty. The debt service coverage requirement for the SBL is pretty generous. In the top markets, it's a 1.2 debt service coverage ratio. Small markets have a 1.3 debt service coverage ratio, and in very small markets, it would be a 1.4. And provided that debt service coverage is there, the loan can be up to 80% loan to value. Another nice thing about the SBL is that it's a non-recourse loan, and there's no personal guarantee required. Now, the one exception to that being for what they call bad boy carve-outs. In the case of, say, fraud or misappropriation of funds or any instance where the borrower is being a bad boy, there are carve-outs in the non-recourse clause that make the loan become recourse. So provided that everybody's playing by the rules, this is a non-recourse loan. And if for some reason things went south and the lender had to foreclose on the property, the borrower wouldn't be personally liable for any deficiency once the property was sold and the lender was paid back. There is a net worth requirement for the SBL and the borrower's net worth or the combined net worth of all the borrowers needs to be at least equal to the loan amount. And there's also a liquidity requirement. The borrowers have to have at least nine months worth of payments in the bank prior to closing in the form of cash or other liquid assets. And that's so the lender knows that the borrower has cash on hand to make their payments. And if there is an early, say, dip in the cash flow, the borrower is not going to default right out of the gate. The credit score requirement is a FICO score of 650 or better. So that's pretty nice. If you have a credit score lower than 650, I would recommend you work on that before going out and buying more apartments. 
Another nice aspect of the SBL is it typically comes with a rate lock. So once the borrower signs the term sheet, submits their deposit, and they order the appraisal and get the ball rolling on the loan application, the interest rate that was quoted is locked. But this is not true of all Freddie Mac lenders. Freddie Mac does allow the rate to be locked prior to closing, but that's actually something that only certain lenders offer. And finally, the occupancy requirement to close the SBL is 90%. So as long as the property doesn't have more than 10% vacancy at the time of closing, then there's no problem. So what are the drawbacks of the Freddie Mac SBL? The first thing is there's more paperwork involved. Because this is an agency loan, it's government guaranteed, there are additional agency requirements that are above and beyond what your traditional bank loan would require. And that's mainly around the non-recourse element. If the lender and Freddie Mac are only secured by the property itself, then they're going to wanna make sure that all of their ducks are in a row in the event of default. Now, for those of you that are organized and maybe have a professional manager in place and your books are all in order, usually it's not a big deal. But the Freddie Mac SBL is not for the disorganized investor. They do require a lot of paperwork, a lot of signatures, a lot of crossing T's and dotting I's. So you need to be ready to manage the paperwork process and be organized in order to close the SBL. These loans, just like many other commercial loans, eventually get securitized so there are exceptions that can be made, but not wildly varying from the general guidelines that I'm outlining in this video. Another drawback of the Freddie Mac SBL is the time to close. It's a little bit longer, usually just a few weeks longer than a traditional bank loan, but that is because it has to be underwritten by the lender. And then once the full underwriting package has been completed, then it is forwarded to Freddie Mac for a second underwriting. So you can't get a Freddie Mac SBL in 45 days. Plan on about 35 business days, which is seven weeks, plus any delays from the time that the term sheet is signed and the ball gets rolling to closing. And we quote a lot of multifamily loans here at Evergreen Capital. And I would say that the Freddie Mac SBL is one of the more popular apartment loans out there. Yeah, it's a little bit paperwork intensive on the front end, but the rate and terms and overall cost savings for the life of the loan beat out many of the other multifamily loan options out there. So if you're looking for a multifamily loan, of course, give us a call here at Evergreen Capital or leave me a note in the comments or reach out directly and we're happy to help. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe and all that. And thanks for watching.